Ons gesels morgen met Andrew Oberholzer, die hoofduitvoerende beamte vir die prostaatkankerstichting. Hy kan hier vandag hier by ons in die atelier om meer te gesels oor spesifiek die statistiek van prostaatkanker in sy buist Afrikaanse mans. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning, thank you very much for having us and morning to you all. It's lovely having you in the studio. We're talking about something that's, that's a little frightening uh, to most men, but it's lovely chatting about it and it's great to have an opportunity to chat to someone who knows the statistics and knows the, 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 the gearing behind the whole thing. Absolutely, and I think really important for men to know about prostate cancer, for us to raise awareness about it. We're not, men are not great at looking after their health, going for their health checks, so this is a good opportunity to remind guys. It is Men's Health Month um, to go for their screening so we can uh, detect this cancer in the early stages when it's treatable. Andrew, how prominent is cancer, or prostate cancer in South Africa? So we don't unfortunately have good data from South Africa. We use US and UK data and we know it will affect about one in eight white males in South Africa wow. and about one in four black guys. So black guys unfortunately are 60% higher risk for prostate cancer and also twice as likely as white guys to die from this disease as well. We're not quite sure what causes this. We know there's definitely a genetic component, um, but that's why in our screening guidelines, we actually recommend black guys start screening from the age of 40 and everyone else from the age of 45. That is <coughs> frightening. I didn't think it was that prevalent. It's extremely common. Um, it does, uh, inc your chances of getting prostate cancer increase as you get older as well. Um, but we are seeing prostate cancer in guys as young as 40 years old. Uh, that's why we want to screen uh, from those younger ages and catch it uh, as early as possible. So that if we can get it in the early stages, we can treat this cancer and actually cure it. Um, if it's spread, unfortunately, we call that metastatic prostate cancer. At that point, we can't cure the cancer. We can only slow the progression of the disease. And that's why really early, early detection is so important. Oh. If you go one in eight and one in four males, specifically now in South Africa, do we look at the same kind of numbers throughout the world? That, those are the same um, statistics in the UK uh, and the US. So guys from black African descent, even in those countries, also have the 60% the higher risk, unfortunately. Wow. <laughs> Uh, you spoke about some genetic risks, uh, so obviously uh, genetic uh, disposition, but, but what are the other risk factors uh, for prostate cancer? Is there a definite list that we can look at and say, watch out for this and this and that? Absolutely. So unfortunately, we don't know what causes prostate cancer, but we know that the risk factors are, first of all, age. So most prostate cancers will occur after the age of 65, but as I say, you do get it in younger guys. Uh, it kind of peaks at around between 70 and 74. Um, the second risk factor is a family history. So either breast cancer or prostate cancer in a first degree relative will increase your oh, chances that's quite also considerably. So it's important to tell your doctor if you do have the, a family history of cancer because you're going to need to screen earlier as well. So also guys with a family history should start screening from the age of 40. Um, and then uh, the other fa risk factor, as I said, is race. So if black guys are, have a much higher risk, so they also not need to start screening from 40. So if, if I had anyone in my family with any type of cancer, does that also include me in, 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 a, in the higher risk factors? Generally does because cancer kind of, there are certain genes that it affects, so definitely. The only modifiable risk factor, interestingly, for, for prostate cancer is the number of ejaculations that a man has every month. So more than 21 a month actually reduces your risks by about 20%. And we're not sure what the reason is. We think it's because of a, a toxic buildup in the prostate and the ejaculations actually um, release those toxins. So I know it's a family show, but we, need to, <laughs> we, we, we do need to talk about the realities. And, and really, we've looked at diet and all sorts of other factors. There are, is some evidence, but it's not strong. So we always encourage guys to eat a, uh, a diet that's not high in saturated fats um, yeah. and to stay healthy, don't smoke and exercise. But that's really the only one we have good evidence for. So... Um, a, quite an easy uh, behavior. Behave. We don't ask you to exercise more. But that's good. And, <laughs> that's and, a good, and yeah, that's eat healthy as well. But there's a very simple behavior you can change yeah. to reduce your risks a little bit. Let's quickly speak about the lifestyle changes because you, you touched on that now. Are there certain foods that you should stay away from or foods that are better for you to kind of not avoid because you can't avoid it, but maybe just to help yourself? So as I said, there is some evidence that a diet that's high in saturated fats, so those are animal fats, so your red meat, we would encourage you to maybe reduce that as down to two uh, days a month, more of a plant-based diet, a high-fiber diet, lots of fresh fruit and vegetables. Okay. So it's the same health messages uh, as for cardiovascular disease. Yes. 
there, there has been a lot of um, talk about lycopene, which you find in things like tomato sauce and tomatoes ah, and yes. melons, uh, that that reduces your risk a little bit. There is some evidence, but it's not sufficient for us to make a oh. strong recommendation. Because so. someone told me, have a tomato a day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and as I, said, as I said, there is some evidence, but it's just not strong enough not strong for enough. us to say that that's definitely going to reduce your risk. Um, <clears throat> there was some studies on vitamin E as well, but they actually found it increased your risk slightly. Oh, wow. So oh. be careful of all the, the natural things. Uh, we don't think it's necessary to take natural supplements. It's not really... Um, going to make a, a big difference. So just eat a healthy diet, high in fiber, lots of fresh fruit and vegetables, cut down on those saturated animal fats, that full cream dairy product, definitely red meat, and red meat's also implicated in a number of other cancers. Yes. For example, colorectal cancer. So mm. I know it's hard, we're a nation that loves our red, our, meat. Our, our red meat, but there are definitely health benefits to reducing or eliminating that from your diet and going to more of a plant-based diet. And then quit the smoking, uh, if you are a smoker, there is some evidence that it also increases risks a bit. Um, and physical activity is important for overall general health. Remember, if you get prostate cancer, uh, the only treatment for advanced prostate cancer is to take your testosterone away. So that means things like exercising and then having your weight under control are going to be very important and help guys on that journey if they have, if they do have to go for those treatments. Yeah. yeah so I, I'd really like to touch on, on treatments a little later on. We're gonna uh, just after the news headlines, we're gonna talk about that again. But but early detection, um, the screening and the process thereof, you can't really overemphasize the importance of it. Absolutely, and the problem is there's no symptoms in the early stages of this disease. So if you're not going for the screening, this cancer can progress. Well, hang Generally, on, hang on. You that, there's no symptoms in the early phase. That, there's usually no symptoms, and that's a big problem. So it's a silent disease. So if you're not going for that screening, this cancer can be progressing. By the time you have symptoms, it generally means that the cancer has actually already progressed, and at that point it might already be advanced. In which case, we can't cure. As I said, if we catch it early, we can actually cure this cancer. So that's why screening. We can't emphasize it enough. Is is just so important. And the screening tests are a simple blood test called a PSA test, a prostate-specific antigen test. It's not a cancer-specific test, so don't panic if it comes back yes. high. It you will require further investigation. It might just be an enlarged prostate or an infection, but that gives us a warning sign. Yes. And because it doesn't pick up all the cancers, there's some cancers that don't elevate the PSA, not a lot. It's rare, about 3%. We also encourage men to go for the better digital rectal or the yes, finger. Yes, yes. Um, if you're too scared of the finger, at least go for the blood test. I say, don't be put off, I'm not, not going to screen it all now because I don't want to have the finger. Yes. Yeah. It's good to have both because it just gives you uh, it means that we've covered all the bases there. Great. Thanks, Andrew. When we come back, we're going to talk about specifically the testing, uh, the, mm -hmm. the blood tests and all of that just again, and, and the treatment of, of cancer. And this picky, it's going to be for me. Maar ja, uh, ons zelfs verder met Andrew Oberholz oor prostaatkanker statistiek en behandeling en voorkoming in Zuid-Afrika. Welkom terug, ons zelfs met Andrew Oberholz, die uitvoerende hoof van die uh, hoofdbeamte van die prostaatkanker stichting. Uh, en dis uh, skrikwekkende ding, maar dis die moeite werd om bieke mire af te breek en weet kaalboors daar oor te praat vir een slag. Uh, Andrew, let's talk about, about the diagnosis and the testing. I mean, like you said earlier, a lot of men are very scared to go get themselves tested for prostate cancer because we have all the stereotypes, we have all the jokes, but there's a lot of fear involved as well. Um, and there's a stigma almost as well. I mean, I don't want to be the guy that has prostate cancer. I'm a manly man. But uh, that's not the case. It needn't be that. Absolutely. And I think it's a very simple blood test, the PSA test. Uh, if that test comes back high, don't panic. As I said, it doesn't necessarily mean you have prostate cancer. You, if it does come back high, you'll generally be referred to a urologist. That's our kind of men's health doctor. Yes. Um, they specialize in the male reproductive system. And they can if, do a scan. They'll do, yeah, generally, and it's great. The technology has really improved dramatically. So now we have the opportunity to do a multi-parametric MRI, and that will give them an idea of suspicious areas in the prostate. And then the next step will be a prostate biopsy. That's the, the, what they use to diagnose um, prostate cancer, where they actually go in, take some of the cells out, examine them under a microscope, and they can see if they're cancerous or not. Mm. And you'll be given a Gleason score, which gives us an idea of how aggressive that cancer is. And that will then enable the doctors to do planning and staging of the cancer, tumor size, et cetera, if it's caught in the early stages. Uh, in many cases, this cancer is never going to be a problem. 
Yes. We call that an indolent cancer, and we'll just keep an eye on it. That's called active surveillance. Yeah. That means you don't have to put yourself uh, at risk for the side effects of treatment. Um, some men will opt for treatment, and the treatment options really are either radiation, uh, where we can put radioactive seeds into the prostate to destroy the cancer cells, we call that brachytherapy, yeah. or external beam radiation, which is completely non-invasive. You lie under a big machine and they blast the prostate with high-dose dose x-rays. And then the other option is obviously surgery, where they surgically remove that prostate. And again, great to have new technology. They can now do that using uh, robots, which means the doctor has a magnified view of the prostate, so they oh. can spare those very important nerves that give us our erections, as provided the cancer hasn't spread to the nerves. Yeah. Uh, it also enables them to better reattach the urethra back there, to, so it, it reduces the, the chances of incontinence, because erectile dysfunction and incontinence are, are, are kind of the biggest and yes. most problematic side effects yes, from yes. the surgery. Um, so there's, we're improving all the time. Wow. Um, Unfortunately, if that cancer's progressed, um, the only way we can slow progression is to take a man's testosterone. Testosterone, away. yes, and that's um, injections and so that's either medical castration, where we actually use medicine to, to um, medications to block the uptake of testosterone in the body, or we can obviously remove the testicles because that's kind of the testosterone factory yes. um, as well. So that means you're going to then have the side effects of having no testosterone, but it's going to at least slow the growth. Yes. Um, of the prostate cancer. We also have some new drugs now that we add to that as well, uh, which enables guys to live even longer. So again, new developments are, are really helping or even giving chemotherapy quite early on in the treatment. So we, we treat it quite aggressively early on, and we find that that helps delay the disease progression, delays those complications of, of that advanced prostate cancer. Yeah, yeah. So there's hope there, there and there's hope. help and there's there. There's constant That's the new thing. treatments that, 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 that can be used, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and that means guys are living longer than they're not having as many complications, uh, complications as before. I have to ask, Sophia, how often do you have to get tested? So especially if you're someone that you've had a bit of a scare in the past, so is it every six months, is it yearly? How often do you then have to get checkups? So we recommend you do it annually with your other blood tests. So you should be checking after the age of 40 all your cardiovascular factors. When you're doing your cholesterol and your glucose checks, do just that make well. sure that they include the PSA there and monitor it annually. Don't just leave it for, for a long period. Yeah, and like you say, it's just a blood test. Do it exactly. annually. Exactly, simple, yes. yeah. Uh, and it's easy. Just go to your doctor. There's no big process. Just go there and say, listen, Test me for it. Exactly. But now you also reach out to the public. You have these programs. There's a, the Daredevil Run, for instance. Tell us a little bit more about the Daredevil Run. I have a mate that has a red speedo. It's a lot of fun. So uh, <laughs> that means especially if it's the red speedo, but we, it's a purple speedo, and yes, they've done a number of different events. And it's a great way. Um, Hollard sponsored this event, and we're a beneficiary of it, so it helps us raise awareness. It, making men's health fun is important because guys are more likely to get involved. We run in a speedo just to create awareness about prostate and testicular but, but, cancer. But, but, but you're running where no one can see you. Oh, no, we want to be seen. We want to <laughs> be out there so people talk about it. Uh, and that's the thing with men's health. We don't have to be embarrassed. Uh, our, our sexual health is part of our overall health. The prostate's part one of our internal sex organs. And it just opens the conversation up yes. about testicular and prostate cancer, but in a fun way. Mm. So we really appreciate guys put on that speedo, everybody's got them on, so you'll be feeling out if you're the guy that comes along fully clothed. We want you to be in your speedo, <laughs> speedo and get out there. Speedo and tackies, it's just 5Ks, you don't have to run it, you can walk it. It's all over the country now because we went virtual with COVID, so you can participate wherever you are, get a group of mates together, have a bit of fun, it'll be taking place in September again. We also do a campaign called Suit Up in September as well, so you put your clothes back on there, and you put a suit on, which is quite rare these days, and, and, and you suit up for one day in September, whether you're bowling or, or, or you're doing oh, your sport wow. or you're in a corporate as well. So we've got the, the daredevil where you put your speedo, speedo on and then we've got the suit up September option as well. So it's, there's something for everybody. But it's just great to have guys uh, open up about these subjects. Yes. We, we tend to be embarrassed and we don't want to talk about it. And also supporting other guys who have been diagnosed because with Because you're never cancer. alone. Exactly. Yeah, we're in this together. And, and we, we said this is a common cancer that affects so many men. So... Let's just talk about it, raise the awareness, and let's go for the checkups. Uh, and, and if I want to partake in one of these runs, uh, what do I do? Do I go to a website somewhere? Do I register? What do I do? Absolutely. So you just uh, put Daredevil in, and, and it'll be all over social media. There's a website. There's a Facebook page. It'll tell you how to register for the event. So 
when you're in around October, start looking out for, for uh, oh, sorry, it's September. September. Start looking out for, for information about the Daredevil. And as I say, it'll be virtual again, so you can do it anywhere in the country. Uh, I think the most important thing is um, that you're not the only one. If you start worrying about your health, uh, specifically about prostate cancer, be aware that you're not the only guy. There is hope. There are an option of, there's a, a, a couple of options for treatment. And, and just, just start actively working for your own health. Absolutely. We always say don't wait till it's too late. Take the test. As simple as that. If we, if we catch it early, we can cure it. That's really nicely said. And I think also what's important is start having the conversations, encouraging mm. other people to, and just creating awareness. And thank you so much for that today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We really appreciate it. And it's great to have someone here that, uh, saying the things that some people won't say on Breakfast TV, but the reality of it. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Andrew Oberholz is the Hoof Uitvoerder Beamte van die Prostaat Kanker Stichting. Hij had een paar mensen in hulle postoosties gestuk, maar buit vast.